Press on mute now. Lovely. Okay, so we're going to start with some sun salutations. It's already quite warm today, so as a, as a precaution, just make sure that you take some nice uh, deep breaths into Dasana to start with. So make sure your feet are placed nicely, firmly on the ground, spread the weight between the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, and heel evenly. So if you have a tendency to lean forwards or backwards, now is the chance just to really check in that you're standing upright. Place a similar emphasis on the weight on the outer edge of the foot as on the weight of the inner edge of the foot. And then naturally your attention will be drawn downwards towards the air or wherever you're standing is supporting you. So you can start to feel that connection, draw it up with the breath as you inhale. Exhale, release the shoulders a little further down the back. Inhale, just take the arms up, interlace them behind the head. And exhale again, drop the shoulders down. So nice face created around the ears, the neck and the shoulders. Draw the lower rib cage in, engage the abdominals, and inhale, look up, and stretch your spine up out of the pelvis, so a tiny little back bend. Exhale again, draw the shoulders away from the ears, hold it there. Inhale, look up and bend back a tiny bit more. Keep the abdominals engaged so you don't collapse into your lower back. Exhale, release the shoulders, let the tension go. One more inhale, inhale through the nose and exhale, leaning a little bit further back, hold it there. On your next inhalation, you draw upright and take the chin to the chest and then inhale, fill the back with air. And exhale, you can now roll forward. So you're making a nice round back. The forehead perhaps comes towards the knee, bend the knee. And then inhale, see if you can use the inhalation to expand your lower back now. And then exhale, release the palms to the floor. And just bend through your feet, left and right. So the Soles of the feet can be zipped up next to each other or if you're feeling really hot already, a little bit of space between the feet allows you to feel cool air in more surf on more of your surface. So you're in a nice soft forward fold. Inhale and lengthen the back so that you lift your navel up away from your thighs. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. And then exhale again, place the palms down, step the right leg back and you can drop the right knee if you like, or you can keep the right leg extended, push the right heel away from you, low lunge. So your hands are either side of your front left foot. Inhale, maybe take the gaze up, exhale. Okay, when you inhale next, lift your body weight up and back onto your back leg and then draw your front toes upwards. So you get a nice stretch along the back seam of your left leg now. Keep your legs drawing together at the thighs. So rotate your thighs inwards. Inhale here, lift the stomach away from the left side. And exhale. Bend that front knee, place the palms and step back into downward facing dog. So walk the dog through and ease through the hips, the sides, the waist. Perhaps take the gaze underneath the armpits and let your vertebra snake left and right a bit, ease up. You may find you're a little more flexible in the hips. Look forward and then step the right leg forward and we come down into that low lunge on the opposite side. So again, an option there is to drop the knee. Either way, you can inhale and draw your gaze upwards. See about peeling your ribs away from the mat. So you have that nice concave spine. And then on your next inhale, 
draw the weight up towards the back leg and draw the right toes towards you. Inhale and exhale. One more breath here. And when you exhale, lower the right toes down and step the left to meet the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, draw up, so push through the feet and the knees. Lift the arms up and exhale, release. Beautiful. Tadasana. Take a moment, check your posture, check your breath. How are you doing? Literally, how are you? You expand to the tips of your fingers, to the crown of your head, to the base of the skull. Do a quick scan. How are you doing? When you're ready, inhale, draw up, look up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. If you want to aim towards working your palms down towards the ground and halfway lift, come up onto the tips of the fingers first so that you still have that lift and space around the belly. Exhale, fold forwards. So now we're going to inhale and step the right leg back again, but this time draw the upper body upright so you come into a high lunge. The palms are parallel to each other. Inhale, the right hip comes forward. Exhale, the shoulders down the back. And then we're going to Spin open, so place the right foot down, pointing to about two o'clock, and come into warrior two. So you keep active from the glute down to the outer edge of the foot in the back leg. The front knee wants to be 90 degrees over the ankle, not beyond it, and the knee tracks over the second toe. Inhale here. Exhale, look into the distance away from the fingertips. Feel yourself drawing through space, taking up space. Inhale. Exhale, one more breath here. Inhale. And exhale, we cartwheel the palms down either side of the front foot so we can step back into downward facing dog. Inhale, draw the navel in and the lower ribs. So you're not letting yourself collapse in your downward facing dog. Support yourself by drawing the navel and the lower ribs in. So your rib cage is held. Draw the ears away, so the shoulders away from the ears. Gaze is either down to the mat or between the legs. Take the weight into the left foot and then inhale, draw the right foot forward as we come up into lunge on the opposite side. Inhale and exhale. Again, if you want to sink to your knee, there's an option to do that. See if you can keep your back toes tucked. It's a nice massage in the toe mound. How's your breath? See if you can draw your lower rib cage in here too. And then span yourself into a nice wide warrior two. You want the heel of the front foot to be in line with the instep of the back foot. So just check that alignment there. 90 degree bend in the front knee over the ankle. If it goes too far beyond the ankle, just make your stance a little longer and then track that front knee over the second toe to protect it. Perhaps inhale and turn the palms upwards and see if that allows your shoulders to sink down a little bit more. And then you can rotate the palms back facing the ground. Pressure into the outer edge of the left foot, which is pointing at about 10, half past 10. Inhale. And one last note, if you're leaning forward with your body, can you draw your body more upright so that you have this plumb center line? Very nice, everyone. Checking on that back arm that it's still parallel to the floor. And then cartwheel the hands down. But we're not gonna come to the downward dog, down with dog. we're gonna step the left leg to meet the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And then inhale, draw up. 
exhale, release. Sun salutation A. Inhale, look up, lift up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, place your palms, either step or hop back into plank. Keep your hips low, your, your heels push away. Spread your fingers, eyes the elbows looking next to each other. Modification, drop your knees. Everyone lower down. Option for cobra or upward facing dog. Inhale, one breath, that's all, it's quick. Exhale, roll over toes and push into downward facing dog. Catch your breath here, five breaths. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. If you need a rest, you can drop the knees. Inhale, exhale, two more breaths. Inhale, Exhale, see if you can lengthen your exhalation, trigger your parasympathetic nervous system. Inhale. And exhale. At the base of that exhalation, take the gaze up to the front of the mat, come up onto the balls of the feet, bend the knees. Now you can either step one foot at a time or keep the feet together and hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Draw the spine out of the pelvis. Keep the navel tucked. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up and release down. Sadasana, come into Anjali Mudra. Place the fingertips underneath the chin. Anjali Mudra is prayer. The familiar, a familiar symbol for most of us. So we're just gonna step back now with the left leg. Again, we want a similar distance to warrior two, so about a leg's length in between our feet. The heel in line with the instep back foot. The front toes point forward and the left toes point to about 10 o'clock. Inhale and draw the arms up. And then imagine that somebody is pulling you left and right. So you mobilize through the waist. The next time you come to being pulled forwards, let yourself come down. So just let the left palm rest on the left hip. Find your positioning now for triangle pose. So you can take your grip at the ankle, at the thigh, please avoid the knee. Wherever you are, you want to get the feeling that your right waist is still drawing upwards. If you're too far down and you feel like you've collapsed, just come a little bit further up so that you can feel that engagement. We'll spend five breaths here so that you can practice what feels right for you. So if you've got your grip with your right hand, use your left hand to draw your pelvis, your left hip open, and then blossom the chest open to lift the left palm above the left ear. Turn the nose, see if you can line it up with your thumb. Roll the right shoulder away, okay? So you've probably been breathing in triangle two breaths now, I would say. Three more breaths. See if you can smooth the breath and breathe through the nose. Lift up through the right waist. At the base of your next exhalation, take your gaze down and let your left palm just rest on your left hip and forget about your left arm. Place your right palm, the outer edge of your right foot, and step a little bit shorter so that you can start to bring weight into the right leg and allow that left leg to float up. So we're gonna come into half moon posture. Might be worth just testing where's best for you for your hand. If you have a book or a cushion close by and you're not feeling too um, positive about being so close to the floor, you can just put something underneath your palm and that will lift you up slightly higher. Be careful of the glass table edges. <laughs> so now bring your focus back to your left hip, just as we did in triangle posture. See if you can peel that left leg backwards a little bit 
and stack it a bit more whoop, on top of the right. If you want a little bit more, bend at the knee, take the outer edge of the foot and draw the knee to the wall behind you. If however you like where you are with the extended leg, see if you can bring the arm up above you and take the gaze up above too. Draw the toes towards your nose, so you're flexing your foot. Okay, then let the left hand come down to the floor. Keep the left leg lifted and come into a standing split. Then let the left leg come down, step it back and come into downward facing dog. So you can walk the dog through. You may well have had quite a feeling of lactic acid building up in your right leg. So what I would recommend is step your left foot into the middle and cross your right leg over and enjoy a bit of a stretch in the legs there, a little bit different, getting into some different areas, release the tension and then bring the right foot into the center and cross the left leg round. So if you need a real rest, a rest from being on your legs, you can drop down into child's pose. We're going to repeat that on the opposite side. So hover the left leg up and step it through, come into triangle posture on the left side. So you're coming to about a leg's length in between the feet, the front heel in line with the back instep, the outer edge of the back foot pressing down into the mat. Draw your arms up parallel, I'm just going to swap around so I can see you while you see me. And just keep with both legs straight, have the feeling that somebody is tugging on both arms forwards and backwards. Mobilize through the waist. And on your next tug forwards, come down into triangle pose and find the place. It might be a different sort of place than it was on the opposite side because we are so asymmetrical. Take the right palm to the outer edge of the right hip and just span that right hip open a little more. Inhale, draw the right arm up. See if you can draw your thumb above the nose and gaze to fingertips. So just as I said earlier, I mean, yoga is about so much to different people. There's a sense about enlightenment and sort of transcending the body, but just as important, there's a sense of really inhabiting ourselves. So up right through to the fingertips. Really try and take your focus beyond your usual sensations of movement and being. Keep the left waist lifting. Okay, exhale and draw your gaze down to the ground. Let the right arm just rest on the right hip. Step your stance a little shorter Take into account any obstacles near you. Bend through the left foot and place the palm, maybe try a different position. I'd recommend maybe half a foot in front of your left foot. Straighten the left leg. You can be on the fingertips of your palm if you like. You could use a cushion or a book to lift you up a little bit if I wanted to. I could even use the sofa I've got here. Just find a place that is right for you for what challenge you're seeking today. With your right palm, stack your right hip a little more above the left. That's just an image, by the way. I don't expect there to be a kind of ruler straight line between your hips. And then float the right arm up. See if you can take the gaze up to the right thumb. Keep the right toes drawing towards you and feel weightlessness and flight. If you fall out, see if you can come back in again. Seeing some very nice half moons. Lovely. Before you come down, make sure your gaze goes down first. Let your palms both touch the ground and then raise that right leg a little higher as you fold towards your standing leg. 
You can have your uh, left knee bent in standing split. But when you do work towards straightening it, you get a lot of stronger sense of the seam that carries right up through your right leg. Go easy with yourselves in this inversion. Lovely. And then bring the right leg to meet the left and turn your feet out to the side. Come down into a squat. So if the squat isn't available, the Malasana, the garland pose, what doesn't sound quite so elegant, does it? You can sit down and just bring your palms in between your knees as such. Both ways extend the spine. Now that's really the focus here. When you're up on your soles of your feet, your spine can actually descend just a little bit further, which is the reason that I prefer it and it's available to me and for as long as it is, I'll practice like that, but we need to just adjust to what's right for us. It might be that your heels are slightly lifted off the ground. If you, again, if you have that cushion close by, you could just pop it underneath your heels to provide a bit of comfort. Okay, we're only gonna stay here just a little bit longer. Let's place the palms and push the legs up straight. Feel the release in those legs. Oh, that's nice. Now draw the feet parallel at the top of your mat and sit down. So bend the knees and sit down into an imaginary stool. I'm going to come down and I'm going to keep sitting down and down slowly, 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 slowly until you're sitting on the mat and you're floating your feet off the ground. Give yourselves a nice hug. Swap your arms over, hug the other way. Lovely. So I'm going to come into a variation of Navasana. Place your palms either over the toes or just behind the ankles and then kick into your hands. So you see my legs and my knees are very bent here. That's absolutely fine. What I'm going to try and do is work towards straight legs. See where you go. So from a nice hugging in, find your balance point on your sit bones. Draw the knees into the chest. If that's nothing, that's fine. What's really helpful here is a drishti. Eventually the drishti will be your toes. Put something straight in front of you. Allow your chest to lift and expand here. You feel that release in the ankles. One more breath here, wherever you are, whatever feelings and investigations arising in you, just see if you can draw it now to a close with your next exhalation, draw the knees in, and then let the feet come together, and the knees can fall out to the side. So we're in Baddha Konasana, lovely for hips. Okay, especially if you're sitting down a lot. Maybe you just want to roll through the sit bones. Now you probably remember my tip about releasing in the ankles. Take the thumbs and press them from the base of the big toe to the, towards the little toe across the board of the foot and then see about opening your soles of your feet like a book. It releases your ankles. Okay, you do see like how much of um, a drop there was in my knees there. That's not my hips, that's my ankles doing that. My arms are nice and straight. I'm just gonna inhale and draw my chest through my arms. So feel a lift in your spine and feel it lengthening forwards and upwards at the same time. So you may roll slightly forward on your pelvis. See if you can then draw yourselves back upright. Take that lift though. So when you inhale, can you think about inhaling from the areas that are making contact with the ground, particularly your root mudra. So that's your sitting bones and the areas between the sitting bones, in between your sitting bones. So inhale and draw up from the ground. Feel yourselves growing up high. If you want to, on your next inhale, you can 
Use your elbows, bend them and draw your chest forwards into a forward fold. Keep your backs nice and long. So I'm not asking you to touch your nose on the ground. I'd like you to keep a lift in the spine, lift and length. Return sideways, perhaps you can see that sense of drawing forwards and long. So not this. Just experience that length in the spine. And if you are folding forward, now I'd like you to investigate the opposite feeling in the spine. So do allow rounding, take the chin to the chest, roll the shoulders forward, and if you just let your head, the forehead, drop down. Hmm. Perhaps it's nice if you're not getting all the way down to place the elbows on the ground, hold your head in your hands. Otherwise, perhaps it's nice just to roll forwards and again with that sense of an embrace for yourselves. We're going to just slow things down a little bit now and we're going to have a little bit of fun doing so. So I just want you to check. I'd like you to have your um, legs wide on your mat lengthways. So you've got the long end of the mat behind you. Taking out the hair bubble and you'll see why in a second. Check that there's nothing behind you that you're gonna roll onto. Bend your knee up and take a hold of your feet on the outer edges of your feet. You could also hold around your ankles. What I'd like you to do, just like before when we're in the Vasana, is kick out into your hands. See if you can make that V for victory shape. Okay. Now, we've done a bit of rocking and rolling before, but we've never, as a virtual class, done it um, with our legs in the V shape. So take it easy and just see if you can convince yourselves whoop, <laughs> to roll backwards and see if you can touch your feet on the floor behind your head. So if you're there, you can keep hold of your feet or you can support your back by placing your palms, fingertips facing upward towards the ceiling. So this is very much like plow posture, just with the wide leg version. And if you're up for a little bit more, Draw your shoulders a little bit closer together. So wriggle on your shoulder girdle. That's where your weight must be. And see if you can interlace your fingers and draw your arms down the mat away from you. So it's funny that the sofa is here because as a modification, it's a wonderful position. Your feet don't want to touch the floor or the head. Having something like this, if you're in a traditional flower pose and you can't quite get your feet behind your head too, this is a really nice way to have a modification. So for those of you who are finding this challenging or it's a first exploration of this posture, that's a nice one to think about for future practice. So we're going to come out of this pose now. If you had your arms interlaced, then release them and take the grip that you had to begin with, and we're going to try and rock whoop, up so that we're floating again. Woo. Now, for those of you who are really ballsy, there's one last challenge. I just had to move back because of obstacles. You might need to do the same. Keep your toes drawing back and really push out your calf muscles because what we're going to do is come down to the ground. Boom your calf muscles want to drop down first. <laughs> Took me a while to have the courage to do that. I'll show you one more time. Push through the heels, let the calves protrude out. So you really straighten through the legs. If you're holding onto the ankles, you can still try it. You can even put your fingers down if you like and just check, oh, I heard a nice sound from up there. Nice one. <laughs> and then come down. Hopefully um, some of you are practicing that on carpet, it can be a bit nicer. If your heels come down first, that can feel quite sore. So forgive me if that's the case for you. Right, we're gonna really chill things out now.
<laughs> I promise. Keep the legs wide and just extend the left palm over to the right hand side and inhale the right arm up and over. So you're getting that nice lateral stretch. All these stretches, the lateral stretches, they increase the lung capacity. So it's a really nice thing to do as we come down to relax. As you inhale, just lift up a little bit more, find some more length in the spine. Micro movements, not big deals. And exhale, perhaps bend through the left arm, elbow a little bit to get you a little bit deeper. Inhale, lift up and away. Exhale, lower down. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Now wrap your uh, left palm over your right ear and come upright. And then let your right ear drop to your right shoulder and feel that nice stretch in the neck. Your left hand, you want to heavy back down. Imagine you've got that heavy shoulder in that left hand. So the left shoulder drops. If you're not quite feeling that this is stretching you, your tendons in your neck, tilt the chin in slightly and get in there somehow. And then release your grip over your left ear. Bring your palm to the right hand side and just draw the head up so that it's central. Let the shoulders roll backwards three times and then roll them forward three times. And then draw the shoulders up to the ears like you are super, super tense. Hold it five tenths, build it four, three, two, one, and then oh, just let it go. Then we're going to expand now and go to the opposite side. So let the right palm come down and inhale the left arm over. Now my feet are generally pointing upwards, my knees are pointing upwards. Just check that your legs are still active. As you inhale, maybe lift up. As you exhale, lower down. I'm much tighter on this side than I am on the opposite side. That's interesting to me. I think this, this is a yo hip. <laughs> Inhale, lengthen, exhale, release. Wow. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale, lengthen, exhale. Place now the uh, left arm over the right ear as you come back upright and then take that little bend in the opposite direction. So again, imagine that heavy shopping in the right hand, the right shoulder draws down, the chin, just angle it so that you code into the most tense areas in the neck. Release your left hand from your right ear, draw your head upright. So really support your neck. There's no point in relaxing it and then yanking it back into action. So once your neck is upright, perhaps just ease through. Notice if you're getting that gritty sort of tension. Draw a few circles with your nose in one direction. And then reverse into the opposite direction. All right, draw the legs together. You may again want to be on the long side of your mat. Lay down, extend your legs out in front of you. And what you're going to do is you're going to use your forearms and just lift your torso and bend it round like a banana shape over to the left slightly. Then draw up your right knee and tuck your right toes underneath your left knee. So your left leg is still extended. You might just want to practice with pushing your left knee down onto your toes. Like feel that different awareness of that contact. 
Then expand your right arm out shoulder height and take your gaze to your right fingertips. I'm not going to do that just so that I can check in on you. We're going to place the left knee over the outside edge of the right, um, the, so the left palm over the outside edge of the right knee. And already you can start to lift your foot slightly off the mat. So my heel is off the mat, you can't see it, but I'm already going in for a little bit of a twist. So now I'm gonna let my gaze find the right palm. Keep your right shoulder drawing down into the mat and then with a little bit of pressure, not too much from your left palm, twist your right knee over to the left side. So it's not the point that your right knee touches the ground. You may get there eventually. But you may also rather frustratingly notice that as you inhale, your right knee peels away from the ground. Well, then you can probably guess that as you exhale, you're going to get a little bit more space to negotiate into the twist. But as I say, the point is not so the knee touches the ground, that's not going to change things dramatically for you. You're getting a twist in the lumbar spine. So that's where you want your focus to be. It takes quite a bit of strength in the left arm. Most other areas can be completely relaxed, apart from perhaps your right shoulder. So soften your gaze and your jaw. Button. Button moon. And then take your um, left palm and put it on the inside of your right knee because you're going to use your palm to draw your knee back upright. Then draw your body straight. So your upper body is now in line with your legs. And then the treasure of this, extend your right leg. And I mean, does your right feel, leg feel longer than your left leg? It might just be an illusion, but it happens every single time for me. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to practice that on the other side. Draw the left leg in and tuck the left toes underneath the extended right knee. And then banana shake your body over towards the right this time. Extend your left arm out, shoulder height, on the mat and the floor next to you. And then take the right palm over the outside edge of the left foot. Do you see how my left already lifting up. I'm going to keep my left shoulder working into the ground. That's my first exhale. Inhale, I feel my knee lift away and then exhale, drawing down. I don't want to roll. I don't want my left shoulder to peel up. Inhale. Oh, exhale. So you can place your right elbow down on the ground to stop yourselves from rolling too much. Inhale. Now I mentioned the lumbar spine, so when you inhale, can you see if you can soften the lumbar spine with the breath? How's that left shoulder doing? Can you just smile? That will relax all your facial muscles. Everything relaxed apart from perhaps your right palm and your left shoulder. Then allow the right palm to come to the inside edge of the left knee and you can push that left knee up so it's back upright, pointing at the ceiling. You'll then want to draw your body whoop, into a straight line with the legs and then extend the left leg away from you so that you now have two longer legs and you're not lopsided. <laughs> so just draw your shoulders a little bit further down the mat and really let your shoulder girdle expand on the mat. Let your arms come out to the side. And then perhaps take your feet a little bit wider, and especially when it's hot, 
it can be really nice to have your legs quite wide on the mat. So you may feel more like a star shape today for your Shavasana. Lift your hips up and place them a little lower down the mat. Again, that will spread your hips, your pelvis along the mat. You get better contact with the ground and that will help you feel increasingly supported. Now just take your tongue and rub it over your teeth. Both the outside, so you stretch the gums, and the inside. Press on the top of the roof of your mouth with the tongue, hold it, and then release, and let the tongue hang in the back of the throat. Just not like it's gonna choke you, but just really relax. And then let your mouth just open slightly. So you can keep your eyes open if you prefer not to drift off too far. Or you can close the lids, lower the lids now. Either way, soften your gaze. You're not staring at anything. Feel the breath and where it is. So if you can feel it very much in the chest, just try and draw it down into the belly slightly. The breathing apparatus is all that really wants to be moving right now. And see if you can once again draw your focus to parts of yourselves that are often taken for granted or overlooked. Where is the air circulating really well now? Which areas of you feel hot? Stick with those areas until you're comfortable with them. I think the most, one of the most important things is to learn to sit with different sensations. Accept them and observe them. Because like most sensations, they will pass. Let your mind just completely relax now. Really step back from agendas and lists. Functions, performances. and simply exist and be. There will still be a part of you that senses, observes, and beholds. Honor that part of yourself. and then draw the knees into the chest. Think about gathering in as a sense of affirmative action. You are honoring that part of yourselves that's there with you through it all. Perhaps draw your knees in a circle a couple of times, so away from each other and then together down the center line and then reverse and then let the knees fall over to one side make a pillow with the palms of the head keep your head supported in your left part in one of your palms as you push up if you had your eyes closed see if you can just let the light back in gently and appreciate your surroundings from perhaps a slightly different perspective we yeah. had before the practice started. And we'll just close with three breaths. Inhale, draw up. Exhale, release. Inhale, draw up. Exhale, release. 
Inhale. Exhale. Mm. Namaste. Thank you very much for joining today for this practice. I hope you enjoyed it.